Hello, hello. Uh, so I was getting a question on stream the other day, and I figured I would just make a quick video on it. It's so basically, how do you take these these stones, which are like being sculpted in ZBrush, of course, they're not very high poly, but let's say you have your high poly mesh. And the question was, how do you make, uh, make your low poly for this? And so I'm going to walk you through the way that I would do it in ZBrush if I was going for a quick, um, rather clean low poly uh, and yeah, how, how I would go about doing that. So what we have right now is, of course, I've got this, this whole stair set that I'm working on and I've got these, these ones that I've already sculpted. I'm just going to use these ones as the base for the example. So I've already combined them into a single, single mesh. I'm going to go ahead and, and just rename it to uh, HP for high poly. And what we want to do is if I press shift F, you can see we got our poly groups. If you don't have any poly groups on these, you can just go down to the poly groups group here and then click auto group and it'll give them individual poly groups. Now the, the really nice or important reason for doing that is uh, if you need to isolate one and work on it to like prep it for, for the, uh, for building your low poly, you can just control shift click and isolate them. So shift F to turn the uh, poly, poly frame on and off, and then control shift clicking in the background or clicking on this one. If you click it again, it'll hide it. And so you can do some pretty quick isolation work if you need to. Anyways, if you press shift F, you can see that, uh, especially if we press P, you can see that you can, um, there's a hole here. So what I actually wanna do is turn this into one contiguous mesh so that it's all melted together and it becomes solid, right? Um, there's also some issues in the back here and I'll discuss a little bit about those. And if it was like a final, like if I was doing this for production, like how I would clean that stuff up. So first of all, let's, let's look for all these holes. We've got one here. I'm just gonna click this guy and BMV for move. Let's get a nice fall off on here and we'll just, we're just moving this into place to just try and close that hole up, which it looks like has been done. Uh, and we'll just go around and I usually turn um, perspective off when I'm in this mode, just so I can catch like a really obvious opening. But it looks like we're doing pretty good. There's some smaller details here and like this area in here is going to be an issue uh, for, well, and when I say an issue, I mean, uh, it's going to cost extra geometry in order to retain that type of information. Same with this type of detail, right? If you want that type of detail to be removed, you can just use like a trim smooth border. And then with alt selected, you can sample the normal off of here and just like try and close that up. That should be relatively okay. Um, you don't need to be too picky. So we just wanna make sure it's all solid. Let's say that that's good. Um, let's duplicate it. And the duplicate, we'll just, uh, we'll rename that one low poly or LP. And there's a few ways to, to remesh this, right? So first of all, we, we want our um, DynaMesh which usually you could go down here, you can go to um, geometry and then you've got your DynaMesh option right here. Um, and when you do that, of course you see it melted all together. Does a pretty good job. There are some weirdnesses. What I would suggest doing is, is smoothing those out or trying to uh, crease them in a way where they're a, a cleaner transition from one surface to the other. You'll see as well that um, you have these details, but before I do that, I want to show, cause this, this kind of surprised some people on the stream Turn perspective off or on there. Uh, when you press uh, W you get your, your move gizmo, right? Uh, let's reset the rotation and all that stuff. If you're holding alt, you can move it around, but uh, there's a little gear here. This has been here for a while now but we've got a remesh by DynaMesh and a remesh by Decimation. So we're on the low poly mesh. You can see right here, if you have your subtools closed, you can see it up on the uh, 
active tool. <clears throat> we'll just click this gear and we'll do a remesh by Dynamish. And then you get this, uh, it's basically this bounding box with these, these cones for control. So let's go ahead. We don't want, uh, you could do a reproject, but I'm not, I'm not too fussed about it. Um, I'm going to just scroll this down and let's say that this is our low poly and we want this at 5,000 polys. So you do that. Wait for a second. Sometimes this crashes as well. So <laughs> watch out. So you can see it's done a, a pretty good job with trying to retain all that detail, but we're getting some weird, some weirdness in here. And this is all extra geometry that could be used in other ways. So let's, let's see if we uh, turn the reprojection off. There we go. So we're looking for high detail while being formed into a single mesh. And that is looking pretty good. Um, this is the moment where I would take these types of details. Normally I would suggest here, let's get out of that real quick. It's, I haven't collapsed it yet because you can treat it. It's similar to a modifier. Um, so it's still live and, and whatnot, but, uh, press Q. We got our side view here. Let me turn the perspective off. Uh, usually I would suggest dragging on and drawing out a mesh to kind of close this off. So you're not having to deal with all this extra detail on the underside, but for details like this, this is extra geometry that your low poly is going to um, take into account. Let's actually make the low poly and I'll show you what that means when, uh, when that's taken into account. So I'm gonna accept the remesh by Dynamesh. So now it is one single mesh. You can actually, if, you, if we go back to, yeah, here, poly groups, auto group, you can see it's a single single mesh now. Um, and when we go and actually go to remesh by decimation, this is where you build your low poly. So target poly count, let's say, let's say we want a, a thousand. You let go of that and just give it a second, should process. This is the part that occasionally will crash. We got our little spinning wheel. Let's just wait for a second and see. There we go. Yeah, so I assume like you see the rate at which the bar was filling when it was processing that. If it's like filling at a pretty consistent rate, you can assume that how long it'll take to get over here. So you can just wait it out and, and see. So here's our, here's our mesh, low poly. And you can see there's extra geometry being accounted for. So if, you're, if you want those polys to be in other areas, uh, those are areas that you're gonna wanna smooth out. And you can see this area as well. So if we go back here, uh, let's go back to the gear and let's just delete the modifier. So let's let's do a little bit of cleanup. I'm just using that same uh, same brush, uh, the trim smooth border, and I'm going to go down here. So you'll see if I hold shift, I've got smooth valleys uh, live as as my smoothing option. Oh, we're getting some pulls here as well. These are called uh, these are pulls. Um, just using a trim smooth border in combination with uh, that smooth valleys brush. Um, you press comma, we can get to brushes and you'd wanna go to smooth and then you've got uh, smooth valley and smooth peaks. Smooth valley only looks at the concave details for smoothing and then smooth peaks looks at the, the convexity or the convex edges. So let's, let's hide this. I'm just gonna fill that in. You can see it does a pretty good job. We might do a, another quick remesh in order to uh, clean the rest of that up. And I'm just kind of trying to close this up. And we're just, yeah, we're just trying to remove any information that 
would normally cause you some issue, uh, or extra geometry, rather. I'll just feel like I'm mowing the lawn here. Let's do, let's do that. Cool. So let's let's say that's that's good to go. Of course, there's some issues back here, and yeah, maybe we can do something like that. But yeah, let's say that this is good to go. We'll go here. We'll go back to the gizmo, and we'll remesh by decimation. We'll set it to a thousand, roughly a thousand. Give it some processing time. You see that bar moving in the top. And it froze. And we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. Now when it comes to the uh the uh low poly and unwrapping it. I'm looking at these inner edges, right? And also the sides. When you have like a, uh, let's, let's just get the uh, Epic Pen up here. And I'll go ahead and accept this. And we can look at the back here. You can see the amount of geometry that's being used in the end for the areas that we smoothed out. We're not worrying about it as much. You're gonna get some pulls here like this. Um, you can do some extra cleanup in your 3D modeling package of choice. But the thing I wanted to highlight, where where did my Epic Pen go? I think it's on my other monitor. Give me a second here. Yeah, it is. Okay. So I'm not going to sit here and unwrap it, but um, I wanted to show you some some ways I would look at this stuff for unwrapping. So if you've got if you've got this mesh and you want to unwrap it, what I would suggest doing is at least with these stairs, you're going to be seeing this edge here quite often, right? So what I would actually do is probably unwrap it like this. So this would be one one island and you kind of follow that that same process for all of these. So that way this edge is kind of retained in the island. And um, yeah, and then you have your sides, of course. And these these inner inner areas here, these could be, in some cases you can combine them together. And this, this looks weird in the drawing, but um, maybe I can get a better angle. But I, I think you get the idea. Um, if we want a video on unwrapping this type of stuff, just let me know. But uh, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, wherever there's these creases, or you have like a really um, harsh transition from one side to the other, that's usually you want a, a UV break somewhere in there. And remember to smooth all of your normals other than um, like making all your edges soft, except for where UV seams are. Make those hard edges and you're gonna get a much cleaner bake. Yeah, cool. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for hanging out.